I think the Trump campaign was in many ways a shit show. There's no question about it. But uh, that was always to be expected. He's not a politician. That's Michael Caputo, lifelong deadhead, Twin Peaks resurrector, and former campaign advisor to Little Rascals cameo star Donald J. Trump. Caputo worked on the Trump campaign for just six months, but the time he spent on the trail was seemingly crucial in getting the Donald to the White House. Michael Caputo was born in Fort Bragg, North Carolina in 1962. His parents divorced when he was just five. After living with his mother in Ohio at 14 years old, he decided to pack up and live with his father in Buffalo, New York. Long before Caputo's prison-bound buddy Paul Manafort hired him to work on said shit show as a campaign communications advisor for New York, Caputo was a young, self-diagnosed juvenile delinquent. His first encounter with the man who would give him the experience he needed to join Trump and company came when he was just 14. Caputo tried stealing change from a blind man running the first floor convenience store owned by Caputo's future boss, Carl Palladino, who saw this go down. He dragged Caputo out by his ear and repeatedly kicked him in the legs. Bruised, but not broken. Caputo graduated from high school sometime in the late 70s. Upon graduation, his father took him to the Army Enlistment Center and told him, if you come back from the service the same way you're going in, you're not welcome in my house. But at 21 years old, Caputo left the army for the University of Buffalo, where he seemingly spent most of his time secretly monitoring professors for liberal bias. It's unclear whether or not this is what his father had in mind for him. After spying on teachers, Caputo started getting his foot in the door of Republican politics. He was mentored by Trump's longest serving advisor, Roger Stone, and was even his personal driver for a period of time. Stone said Caputo understood that in order to have a successful campaign, there must be an element of making politics entertaining. He'd succeed in this area later on. Is this show? Despite learning from Roger Stone, Caputo claims Jerry Garcia and Ronald Reagan shaped his worldview. You know, two people cut from the same cloth. Marijuana. Marijuana, pot, grass, whatever you want to call it, is probably the most dangerous drug. Caputo became completely enamored with Jerry Garcia's rival, Ronald Reagan, and ended up working for him, promoting the administration's policies through propaganda in Central America. Back stateside in 1991, Caputo launched a successful Twin Peaks resurrection campaign backed by thousands after the show had been canceled. He convinced the president of ABC Entertainment to air the remaining six episodes of the ongoing season. Definitely the most honorable thing he's done. In 1992, with a successful grassroots Twin Peaks campaign under his belt, Caputo made the obvious next step and worked for George H.W. Bush's losing re-election campaign, all roles that couldn't prepare him enough for his last. Because I know Donald Trump. The Donald Trump campaign had nothing to do with Russia. Caputo certainly did, however. He lived in Russia in the 90s, serving as an advisor to Boris Yeltsin. Caputo later helped run a propaganda campaign for the Russian government-owned media company, Gazprom, to reportedly improve the image of and help get Yeltsin's successor, Vladimir Putin, elected. Caputo told his hometown paper, The Buffalo News, that he was not proud of the work today, but at the time, Putin wasn't such a bad guy. Caputo reportedly entertained Putin at a reception at his house in Russia. Fun! Cool! I guess everybody in life deserves second chances, right? Caputo himself may not have been offered a second chance by some, however. He was convinced at one point that Russian thugs were out to get him. So Caputo, like any of us, took his parrot, named August West, and went into hiding on his boat in South Florida. Hi, I'm Michael Caputo, and this is my boat, the motor vessel Maribel. I guess this is my experiment in 21st century divorced living. But he cleaned up and jumped ship in 2010 to become a campaign manager for Carl Palladino's bid for governor of New York. Caputo's client was controversial, to say the least. A string of racist, misogynist, and sexist emails were released from Palladino to an array of associates. Caputo claimed the emails were fake at first. We could not confirm that all of them were from Carl. They've been known for uh, 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 putting together fake emails in the past. When questioned specifically about which emails were faked, Caputo lashed out. What emails did we fake? I'm asking question. you what email Are you we nervous? Fake. No. Yeah. You're not part of the media, so. Certainly are. 
You're twitching. You a little nervous over there? No, a little cold. You might have a little legal problem on your hands. Go ahead. Go ahead what? I'm asking you a question. I don't need to answer your questions. You're part of the Democrat attack machine. I don't need to answer your questions. <laughs> he eventually dismissed the emails as off-color and could see why some would consider them to be offensive. One of the emails Palladino sent was a video of African tribesmen dancing. It was labeled Obama's inauguration rehearsal. Despite Caputo's effort to sway the election in Palladino's favor by dispersing models at polling stations, Cuomo won in a landslide. This rough go of it prepared Caputo for the wildness of the 2016 campaign when Paul Manafort hired Caputo on to Team Trump to help improve the relationship between the media and the Donald. For six months, Caputo took on one of the hardest tasks known to man, reshaping Trump's image. Caputo claims he resigned because of an excited tweet he posted after Corey Lewandowski's firing. Well, Corey and I haven't gotten along very well and, and it got kind of personal. I think my exuberance over finding out about these fundamental changes in the campaign leadership got the best of me. And I realized very quickly that I had done a real disservice to Donald Trump. While Caputo may have done a disservice to Trump, he did a disservice to the nation when he downplayed George Papadopoulos' role in the campaign. He was the coffee boy. I mean, you, you might have called him a, a, a foreign policy analyst, but in fact, you know, if he was going to wear a wire, all we know now is whether he prefers a caramel macchio, a macchiato over a regular American mm. coffee in conversations with his barrister. But the coffee boy instead looked to be deep in conversation between the president of the United States and Jeff Sessions, two people who are not his barista. Papadopoulos, the coffee boy, has been sentenced to two weeks in prison for lying to the FBI about his connections to Russia. There's no question that Caputo's ties with Russia are strong, and he was pressed about them by the House Intelligence Committee behind closed doors for four hours where he denied any connection between the Russian government and the U.S. election. He's recently been going through great lengths to distance himself from all the controversy. When Caputo isn't filling in to host a local Buffalo radio show, he's working hard to destroy any evidence of him working for Putin. An employee of his has been blocked by Wikipedia for creating multiple accounts to change the wording of Caputo's Putin section. Although Caputo claims he had zero connections with Russians during the campaign, he's now launching businesses with them. Caputo is kicking off a startup site with many of his Russian buddies called Bond.pm, which he describes as filling the gap between Netflix and YouTube. Caputo sees the site, among other things, as a second chance to Hollywood elites who've been accused of sexual misconduct. He told Wired that if Kevin Spacey wanted to reprise his role in House of Cards, Bond.pm would be the perfect place to do it. A franchise like that would find a home on Bond.pm. The gods of Hollywood have decided that Kevin Spacey is never to be seen again, but his fans didn't get a say in that. Caputo and his team of Russians are also reportedly reaching out to Roseanne in an effort to make his site her new home. He also hopes Mel Gibson will be involved after missing so much that he could have done. Caputo says he's taking the idea to people who don't like the Oscars ceremony and can't stand the finger-wagging from Hollywood. Yeah, let's keep the politics out of any entertainment, please. With interest in subjects that have been accused of sexual assault and racist rants respectively, it's unknown just how many shows people in the Trump administration have been pitched. Yeah, let's keep the politics out of entertainment, please.